Yesterday, Canadian Senator Rosa Galvis uh, introduced a Climate Aligned Finance Act bill in the Senate, and I'm going to talk to her about that. So welcome to the interview, Rosa. Thank you for having me here, Markham. Well, happy very to happy talk to, to you. Very happy to do that because climate finance is a very hot topic these days. And why don't we start with an inter uh, maybe an overview of your uh, bill, please? Yes, sure. You know, this is not something that come out uh, in the in the few months before. This is in the making for almost a couple of years, and um, we want to solve two issues, two problems. So on one hand, you know, we know that climate change is here and it's uh, impacting us, every province, ev every Canadian, um, through extreme weather events that destroy basic infrastructure, to health impact, to economic losses, uh, and um, increasing uh, social inequality. Um, we know also that uh, if we wait for the action, inaction is more expensive, it's getting it more expensive. So on one hand, we have that. On the other hand, we have that uh, banks and investing institution, public and private, um, they know about this risk and they are scared of these stranded assets. They are scared of these transition risk and physical risk. Um, but they are at the same time in financing um, the oil and gas, fossil fuels, and uh, here in Canada, elsewhere in the world. And so therefore they are fueling the climate crisis. So they call it this double materiality and our bill in a nutshell wants to uh, solve these two issues and align finances with our national and international commitments. Now, Rosa, uh, I've, I've uh, run across many criticisms of uh, Canada's banks. Uh, they're one of the leading uh, financiers of oil and gas and, and even coal uh, development uh, out in and outside of Canada, as well as the infrastructure like pipelines that support those industries. And they keep saying that they're going to be net zero by, you know, 2050 and so on. And their actions belie their, their commitments. So how will your act, your, if it's passed, in, it's passed and gets through the House of Commons and becomes law, how will it, in fact, align their uh, investment and financing activities with Canada's climate targets? Yes, so you're absolutely right. So there is a, an incoherence. The, the bank and investing uh, entities are all, you know, um, producing uh, a major ramping of the carbonization pledges, but it stays in pledges. There are also um, uh, joint alliances for the disclosure of the climate risk, but uh, that, uh, it stops there on the voluntary disclosure. And when we look at the... At the um, at the rate at which voluntary disclosure is happening, we see that it's only in the two, five, maximum 15% of disclosure, but nobody goes beyond that. So what we are proposing, it is what we call a shell act because it has uh, several parts. Um, it has actually five parts, but at the heart of our shell act is part one called the climate align uh, finance act because this act touches on several um, big financial inst uh, go uh, federally regulated institutions, we need to have uh, to amend some acts. So for example, you know, we also have to amend the Bank of Canada Act, the Expert Development Act, but that comes in part two. The heart of, uh, of the changes that, um, that we're bringing in is in part one, Climate Aligned Finance Act. So how this uh, um, CAFA, as we nickname call it, the bill, will, will do this. So CAFA aligns the activities of federal financial institutions and other federally regulated entities with the superseded economic and public interest matter of achieving climate commitments. It aims to timely and meaningful progress towards safeguarding the stability of both the financial and the climate system. So to do so, it has to recognize that, that this is a systemic risk and that will affect all the economy um, if we don't align the capital financial flows with climate commitments. So maybe more specifically, you, you want to know how exactly CAFA does this. Yes, that's, that's a, that was going to be my next question. How does it do it? 
Okay, so within the heart uh, of, of the shell, which is part one, the, the uh, Climate Aligned Finance Act, we have seven actions. So the first one is to have a new duty for board directors and uh, that this duty will align the entity with the climate commitments. Also, it will align the market supervision, such as OSFI, with our climate commitments. It obligates the development of action plans, targets, and progress on meeting climate commitments through annual reporting requirements. It makes capital adequacy requirement proportional to microprudential and macroprudential climate risk generated by the financial institutions. It also will instruct the government to create and produce action plans plants with details of aligning financial products, you know, we have the lending, the advice and the investment uh, with the climate commitments. And finally, it will mandate timely public review process on implementation to see the progress to ensure that there is a prog uh, that there is an iterative learning, but there is actual progress. Well, let me give you an example. Let's say that there's a, a, a natural gas or an oil pipeline that's proposed and the Royal Bank and the picking out any number of banks that sign on to finance that. Now, if your act is, if bill is passed and becomes law, then there will be there will be disclosures. So it'll, every, every, the government will know that in fact, they're doing this activity that they shouldn't be doing under the act. And it, what then happens? Is, is there a penalty? Is there some kind of, you know, uh, how, do, how does that work? Yes. Absolutely. So this bill doesn't have what we call in our jargon, uh, carrots or sticks. But what it does, it will put so much transparency and coherence uh, that the, the playground um, uh, field is going to be level. And so everybody will know with clarity, coherence and, uh, and for the long term, what are the, the rules. And so therefore, it makes it easier for an investing um, in, uh, entity to give the agreement to whatever the project it is. Now, you, you talk about pipelines specifically. So let's talk about pipelines specifically. So on one side, you know, the, uh, the, the, the board of directors will have a new duty, which is to look to use the lenses of climate change when they take financial decisions. Also, the mandate now it's aligned with our national and our international commitments. So we just pass a net zero 2050 uh, bill, and we have the carbon uh, the the carbon uh, pricing, and we also have now capping emissions and maybe another methane also uh, regulation. So all of these, it's within the climate commitments. Internationally, we are signatories of the Paris Agreement. So all of these have to count while taking the decision. Are we contributing to uh, attain our commitments or does this project take us away from that? Um, also in these boards now, there is going to be climate expertise and we are going to get rid of conflict of interest. And this is very important because talking with experts, many have um, said that the fact that the finance, the finance decision is taken in absence of climate science and climate expertise. So we are, we are having this incoherence of with one hand doing something and with the left hand doing something else. Final question, Rosa. Uh, yeah. I, I think Canada has a reputation uh, globally, and certainly we talk about it in, in the domestically, that we, we talk a good game, but we don't, our follow through uh, is sorely lacking uh, when it comes to, to climate initiatives. And I can foresee a situation, a scenario where your you know, act becomes law and Canada says, uh, okay, banks, you can't do this so, and you're gonna have to disclose. And if there is, and then nothing happens. The regulators, the regulators don't enforce it. The federal government, you know, has all sorts of loopholes in the in the act, and 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 we really nothing changes. I mean, that and that's part of the the complaint today is there's all sorts of transparency. Investors know that the Royal Bank and and so on are putting lots of you know hundreds of millions of dollars into these projects, and they invest in in, in them anyway. So my answer to that is the following. 
so far in Canada, it's only a recommendation to disclose climate risk. We are very much behind compared with what it's found in UK, what it's found in Europe with their green taxonomy and plus. So they are beyond um, uh, climate uh, risk disclosure. So this bill is going to ask them for more. It's not only just to disclose the risk, but to say what are they doing. Now, right now, they are losing investments because every day we hear that there is a new, um, you know, a bank or a big investors, uh, not to name them, uh, Black Rod from uh, the, the biggest one in, in the world, saying they are not going to invest anymore. There is also the problem that even insurance, they don't want to insure anymore such as things like pipelines. You know, there is a, it's a, we, we don't know who's insuring TMX. We don't know, and, and it's playing against the image. Now, banks too are now worrying about their images. There is protest because we are seeing these double, double um, actions of on one hand saying, yes, I, I pledge that it's going to be net zero 2030. But on the other hand, they are still, as you said, uh, investing in these, uh, in these uh, um, soon to become stranded um, assets. Now, the, um, now the, uh, the, uh, the issue with uh, our national new rules and the international commitment, it says that we have to go beyond the declaration also of our emissions with scope one and scope two. Uh, we have to go now to scope three. And in the financial sector, scope three is much more important than scope one and scope two. So by, you know, more than pointing it with the finger, by telling them, and, and it's true that uh, as I say, there is no uh, carrots, there is no penalties. But on the other hand, um, the government, we are going to instruct the government to come with action plans and we are giving them guidelines. And among those guidelines, there are the issues with incentives and with penalties. Well, Rosa, good luck with your with your bill, and we'll see if it gets passed in, into law. And certainly there needs to be action on this front, and hopefully uh, your legislation will be it, what's needed. So thank you very much for this. Thank you so much, Markham.